protesters in D.C. pushing for a Black House autonomous zone outside of the White House. The move getting a strong response from President Trump. He sent out a tweet, there will never be an autonomous zone in Washington, D.C. As long as I'm your president, if they try, they will be met with serious force. And that prompted Twitter to flag his post as a violation of their rule. All right, here to weigh in, live from the White House, counsel to the president, uh, Kellyanne Conway. Uh, Kellyanne, do you agree with Twitter or you agree with the president? Well, Twitter seems to be very selective as to who, what, where, when, and why, and how they flag uh, certain tweets. I think the broader issue is what's important here. There's a huge difference to the president and the rest of us between peaceful, peace and protesting, and violence and vandalism. I, I can't believe Nancy Pelosi and people like that are so quick to remove st statues in the statuary hall and remove portraits of former speakers of the House. She has walked by those statues and paintings for years and has never yet cast a positive vote in favor of school choice, which disproportionately helps, thank God, uh, kids of color in communities where they are trapped in failing schools. So it also seems to just be a convenient, easy way for some people to not do their jobs, to actually help people the way President Trump has helped all Americans, including the forgotten man, woman, and child in our communities of color. Yesterday, I was with the vice president of Wisconsin, and we spoke about the 30th anniversary of the school choice program there in Wisconsin, which really has led to many educational freedom scholarships and charter schools and school choice and alternatives to public schools where they are failing kids, which of course is not everywhere. And I'll tell you, the president said, even as a candidate five years ago, that if we can dig out the Panama Canal, put a man on the moon, win two world wars, we ought to be able as a nation to provide a quality education for each child. This empowers parents. So my message to those who want to rip down statues and remove portraits in the Capitol, where's your vote to actually help people? Uh, easy, convenient, but also vandalism and violence and who is it helping? Right. Uh, listen to the brother of George Floyd, God rest his soul. Listen to uh, the widow of uh, Mr. Brooks in Atlanta. They're saying peaceful protesting. And that's not what we're seeing. And look at what happened in Seattle. The mayor there looks foolish today. She basically said, we're just having a beer garden, a little back mm -hmm. backyard barbecue. It's fine. Let them be there. There was somebody lost their lives. She's rethinking it now. She's calling in the police to help her. That's what happens when things get too far. So, Kellyanne, it's one thing to criticize a president, but it's another to criticize his or one day her children. And that's what happened. This guy, John Henson, I used to think he was so funny on Talk, talk Soup, but very disappointed in what he tweeted over the weekend. He wrote, it's now deleted, but he wrote, I hope Barron gets to spend today with whoever his dad is. Now, this guy is now on the Food Network. Uh, that was tweet, uh, that was deleted. But Stephanie Grisham, Melania's spokeswoman, uh, she said this to the Daily Caller. She said, sadly, we continue to see inappropriate and insensitive comments about the president's son. As with every other administration, a minor child should be off limits and allowed to grow up with no judgment or hate from strangers and the media. What do you say, Kellyanne? Well, I've made part company here a little bit with even mentioning this and naming the guy who said the tweet because I think you're giving him a platform respectfully. Yeah, there's a, I thought about that too, but Kids it is Kids are news. off limits. I didn't even know who he was, and now people do, but uh, sure. But uh, the first lady has been very protective of her son. All of his parents are. And uh, Stephanie Grisham is absolutely correct. Kids are off limits. Look, Chelsea Clinton was 12 when her father was elected. The Obama daughters were very young, even younger than that, I believe. But we should all treat them. I used to say you've got to treat them like Fabergé eggs. They're off limits. Yes. You don't touch them. You don't talk about them. I feel very strongly about that. And people somehow believe that if they can just say it, they should. There should be no unexpressed thought or tweet left in America. Folks, you can have unexpressed thoughts left. And by the way, it's not funny. When did comedy become so unfunny mm. and so overly political? So um, he has every right to to be a kid like everyone else, and I'll just leave it at that. There you go. Uh, at the outset, you were talking about Twitter. You mentioned school choice, which I know the president has been talking a lot about. You have as well. Will the private schools, like the Catholic schools and other private schools, be able to get some sort of stimulus money from the fourth round of uh, pandemic relief? Uh, because I, I have heard from the Cardinal here in New York City, they are going to have to close a bunch of schools that serve a, a lot of communities that uh, are funded by the Sunday collection plate that they have not been able to do for months. 
So is the administration going to be able to get together with Congress to help the schools? Yes, and that question is really for Congress because President Trump led a call with um, hundreds and hundreds of Catholic leaders and educators and parents, and, and Cardinal Dolan was on that call, Cardinal O'Malley of Boston, Archbishop Gomez of Los Angeles District, and other leaders. And we have a two-part plan right now uh, that we are presenting. One is for emergency relief for many of these non-public schools. And the second part are these education freedom scholarships, which have been around for a while. Uh, Congressman Bradley Byrne sponsored them in the House, Senator Ted Cruz in the Senate. They're really picking up a great deal of steam. Why? Because the education freedom scholarships uh, doesn't, doesn't use government money, really. It's about right. $5 billion in private donations where you're repurposing your tax your tax payments and so that you can you can give people choices and it's administered through uh, sponsored organizations that are approved in your state. We have about 17 or 8 states like Florida and Arizona where these scholarships, education freedom scholarships have been transformative. I've met the students and their parents and this is incredibly important because you say correctly that our parents are being denied their choice because of the COVID pandemic to send their kids to schools and I would remind everybody about one-fifth of our students nationwide in Catholic schools are not Catholic and over mm -hmm. one in five are kids of color in our inner cities uh, they're often a majority of black and Hispanic children so you're denying them and their parents to yep. continue the education they put before them we need Democrats to support this this is a time for them to say that looking at the tripartisan support in the polls for school choice and education freedom scholarships that we've seen everywhere you have right. vast majorities of Millennials African Americans okay. Hispanic women everybody really supports the idea of education freedom and school choice please don't stand in the schoolhouse door gotcha. not allowing these kids to exit failing schools all right Kellyanne Conway thanks so much you know you have a busy Thank day you. ahead of you all right meanwhile